Hi, it's Dr. Travis Whitney. I am joined today with Bella from Boca Raton, Florida, from Pureform. Yeah, she's gonna tell us and teach us about extracorporeal blood oxygenation and ozonation. Tell us, first off, tell us the difference between EBU and EBO2. Perfect, so EBO2 um, is essentially, we're getting to the same goal as EBOO, but we're two different entities. Um, EBO2 is different because we're using higher doses of ozone. So we have a uh, gamma between 12 and 30, um, which is the therapeutic dose of ozone to be given. It is used as a low and slow treatment. So we give these lower doses of ozone at a 45 minute period, whereas EBOO is giving seven gamma, which is a lower gamma outside of that therapeutic range. Um, so it'll be a little less effective as far as the um, benefits of the ozone go. Um, we're also getting a component of foam in our waste, which is beta-2 microglobulin, an inflammatory protein, where they're not getting this. Um, and we also have a hemolumin device, which you see behind me, which has six wavelengths of light, UVA, UVC, red, green, blue, and amber, which really supercharge the cells and complement the ozone by killing virus, bacteria, mold, etc. So for anyone curious, never heard about this treatment before, or maybe they have because they have an autoimmune condition or Lyme's, EBV, some sort of infection, who would benefit from doing this? Like why should somebody come and get a treatment like this? Sure, so EBO2 um, is a blood filtration, ozonation, and photobiomodulation protocol, which means we're filtering out fats, cholesterols, heavy metals, toxins, as well as inflammatory proteins. So that means anyone with high cholesterol, anyone with high triglycerides, anyone with an autoimmune condition, chronic inflammation, we can help all of those populations, especially our mold and Lyme patients. Um, and even for general wellness, this is a generally well patient's treatment as well, can increase endurance, decrease brain fog, um, increase vision, acuity, um, et cetera. So your athletes, your biohackers, your anti-aging uh, community would be doing this um, a few times a year, yeah, just to, to stay up with all that stress you're putting your body through. So what, what's a typical, do, uh, what's a typical treatment schedule look like? Like how often are somebody coming in? So, uh, two to four times a year is great for our general wellness patients. Um, generally well patients who just kind of want an oil change twice a year. Um, that's great. Our athletes who are putting a little more stress on their bodies will do about four times a year. Um, anyone struggling with an inflammatory condition, uh, autoimmune condition, et cetera, will come in three times in a row, once a week for three weeks, or as soon as 72 hours between uh, protocol. And then after that, they'll go home, kind of keep an eye on their symptoms. And then when they feel them start to creep back in, they'll get back in the chair for another. Ton of potential to help a wide range of people who would not get this. Like Good question. Yeah. yeah, so patients uh, obviously that are pregnant, lactating, anyone under the age of 16, um, just because the blood volume's uh, too large for a child. Anyone who's anemic, um, has low blood pressure that's not normal to them, that's experiencing lower blood pressure than normal. Anyone that is in a critical state or in a hospital setting type state, this is more of a generally well patient's treatment that has some underlying kind of conditions. Kind of too hard on the body for someone. Like if you're, if you're kind of, you probably should be going to the hospital or if you're up for an organ transplant, Mm -hmm. something this isn't this wouldn't be for you definitely this is an oxidative treatment at the end of the day so adding that extra oxidative stress onto the body sometimes is a little bit too much in those states yeah so and a popular where, where we use it here is to kind of do that like you said an oil change like clean the body out and then to get a lot of good stuff in whether that's iv nutrients um ozone's going it's going back into the blood so that's having its own cellular cascade of good stuff uh, stem cells, putting stuff like live stem cells back in the body. Um, anything else you use it like pre for? Prior to surgery, obviously before all the pre-op labs are done, it's a really nice clean out or post-operatively after you have the anesthesia to kind of clear that out after. Um, this treatment actually does uh, increase NAD in the body as well. Um, so some people might even feel that NAD sensation during the protocol. So really great for cellular health, mitochondrial health, um, and anti-aging. That'd be another good drip, right? Do this, clean out the blood, nutrients, cells, NAD afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Sky's the limit there. Yeah. 
We do not treat any cancer patients. Um, it's poorly studied in the population. In theory, we could help those patients, but we don't have enough knowledge to know that we wouldn't send them in the other direction. So we um, do not treat any cancer with EBO2. We'll save like, a, what is ozone? That can be like another sure. video. You can find that out somewhere else. But what is this compared? Because there's ozone, really popular, has been get, getting more and more popular. What's this compared to just like an ozone treatment? Mm -hmm. So similar to a 10 pass. Um, so basically with a 10 pass, three pass, five pass, you're taking some blood out of the body, squirting some ozone in it, shaking it up and giving it right back. Um, with EBO2, we have a large surface area in the filter behind me. Um, so the blood and the ozone are constantly mixing for 45 minutes over that large surface area. So we're using lower gammas, whereas in a 10 pass, they'd use about 70 gamma. We're using between 12 and 30, like I said. So it's a low and slow better absorption of the ozone, um, and you're getting all those good byproducts back into the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice, lovely. Um, anything else? Um, I think that's it. We covered a lot. I did cover a lot. That's good. <laughs> uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, subscribe for the next video, and uh, we'll see you later.